Hey, hey, we're back. All right. Um, just got through. You probably just got through the uh, switching lecture. I know that's a long one. There's a lot of information in there, so I'm going to attempt to uh, not take too long with this uh, particular piece. But we're going to talk about loop protection at layer two, and you know, it's an important concept to understand. Uh, it may be may help you in a troubleshooting event later, and also it will be definitely something that. Uh, CompTIA is interested in you knowing uh, for the exam. So let's go ahead and uh, get rocking here. All right, so layer two loop protection. So first off, let's talk about layer three. So when we're talking about layer three, we're talking about, you know, IP. We're talking about a packet, okay? And in the IP header, I got a little protocol capture here, and every IP packet there's this TTL value. Okay. So every time this passes through a router, this TTL value goes down by one. So at layer three, if your packet was caught in a routing loop or it was bouncing around between, you know, th three routers, eventually TTL would make its way down to zero and that packet would be dropped. Okay. So at layer three, we have loop protection. It's built right into the IP header. Okay. But we're talking about layer two and what kind of information is in the the layer two header so down here we've got a layer two header and as you can see there's not a whole lot of data in there okay all we've got is the destination MAC address the source MAC address and the type of packet it is okay? there's no TTL in here okay so there's nothing in layer two that's built into that frame header that's going to tell the the switch that this particular uh, frame is stuck in a loop. Okay, so what does that mean? Okay, well, that means that it'll go forever, and it'll eventually have a catastrophic effect on your network. So, how do we get loops? There's basically two ways that we uh, have loops built into our system at uh, layer two. Okay, one would be we do it on purpose. Ralph, why would I ever want to do that? <laughs> well, <laughs> we're going to get to that. Um, it's not the end of the world, but we may do this intentionally, and if we do this intentionally, we may be doing this so that we have redundancy, okay? Or it can happen accidentally, okay? So right here, this is what it looks like after the layer one guys finish wiring your building. Six months later, <laughs> this is what we have. <laughs> what happens is, is over time, and we see this a lot in the classroom environment because we get you know there's different needs for different classes and so alright well we'll just put a wire here, we'll put a wire there, we'll put a wire here put, and eventually you know what was a very pristine installation can get a little bit uh, messy over time and so we might create loops just because you know someone says oh this isn't plugged in let me plug that in boom and they make a loop without even realizing it um, so it's you know it can happen accidentally and it, it has happened in our environments on multiple occasions accidentally so what does it mean okay so what are the implications here so let's do we could have a loop that works like this so somebody accidentally just plugs a cable in twice to a switch okay or you know maybe we're uh, in a situation where we're connecting our switches and so we connect this switch over here and then we connect this switch here and then we connect this switch here and then oh, we connect this switch here why not we're connecting switches boom we got a loop alright so either way okay that's what happens we have a loop so what is we we talked about what a switch can do a switch can forward filter or flood okay so what does a switch do with a broadcast so we we introduce a broadcast onto our network and let's go ahead and let's just make our broadcast yellow sure All right. so we have a broadcast comes in this port mm -hmm. well that's gonna go out all ports mm -hmm. that's what a broadcast does so boom boom broadcast is flying around alright so now the broadcast also makes its way onto you know this port here okay and back into this port okay and then back into this port again and back into this port so that broadcast is now caught in a loop also that broadcast be forwarded across here and forwarded across here and forwarded across here and forwarded across here and then it would keep going and it would go out all these ports again okay because that's what switch does with the broadcast this broadcast is flying around alright so 
Now we've got these broadcasts that are stuck in a loop. And now we've got another broadcast coming into the switch. All right. And that broadcast, you know, starts running out all ports, but then it gets caught in this loop. Okay. So, and then it's going this way and this way and this way and this way, and it just keeps going and it's going and it's going and it's stuck. And so each one of these broadcasts is stuck, you know, in a loop. And so it's filling up the back plane on our switch. Okay. And so eventually, okay, this is going to bring down the network. Because each broadcast is going to get caught in a loop, and eventually, that's what that's going to do is it's going to flood, you know, the backplane on the switch. And so, one of the uh, symptoms of this is, you know, I turn my switch on, it works fine, and then a minute later, no more communication. Okay. So, and then I turn it on again, and it works fine, and then no more communication. Okay. Well, that's because <laughs> you're clearing it by turning it on and off, and then all of a sudden it's going to pick up those broadcasts, and eventually we're going to flood the back plane on the switch. Okay. So what happens, again, that's a common symptom. The switch works for a short amount of time, and then it stops functioning. That should be a, a light bulb in your head that i got to loop somewhere, and i got to go figure that out. All right. And if I'm dealing with unmanaged switches, they, they don't have any way of dealing you know, with a loop. But with managed switches, we have something that we can use in order to uh, protect ourselves from this loop and in some ways protect ourselves from ourselves. And so what we have in the managed switch environment is we have something called the spanning tree protocol. Okay? So this gets back to, well, Ralph, why would you make a redundant link if it makes a loop? Well, if I'm using managed switches, then I don't have to worry about it because it's going to be taken care of by STP, by the spanning tree protocol. All right, so think about a loop for a second before we start talking about what spanning tree does. So the thing with a loop is that it doesn't have a start or a finish. Okay? It just is a loop. And so the first thing that spanning tree does okay, is define that start and finish point. What it does is it defines this is the beginning okay everything is relative to this and what that what we call that in spanning tree is we call that the election of what we would call the root bridge so some bridge okay is going to become the root bridge and that's going to be based off of the bridge priority okay so each bridge can be assigned a priority so you can choose which bridge you want to be the root okay so all of the other switches in the environment are then going to, once we've identified who the root is, are going to identify who their root port is. Which port do I have that faces root that has the lowest cost? And so they're all going to figure out what their root port is. Okay. This is one of the reasons why a switch, when you plug into a switch, you have to wait half a minute before you can actually transmit data because it's going through this spanning tree process. So the other ports figure out, all right, now what about my ports that are facing away from the root. All right. And those ports become what are called designated ports. So every port on the root, the root doesn't have a root port, it is the root. But these ports become designated ports. Okay. Now, so we figure out designated ports. And so those ports that are either become root ports or designated ports, okay, they go into what we call a forwarding state. But all of these ports started out in what we would call a blocking state. So if you don't, if you aren't a designated port and you aren't a root port, then you just stay in that blocking state. So those ports remain in the blocking state and what that does is that prevents loops in the environment. So all of this happens for you automatically. Okay, you don't have to worry about this. So if you have all managed switches, you might have created loops and never realized it because spanning tree prevented the actual creation of the loop. So those ports that would cause the loop to occur just remain in that blocking state. And the spanning tree continues to work on your behalf in case um, you know one of the designated ports gets removed that that a new port will become a designated port or you know so this is something that doesn't just happen once. This is a di dynamic process that's going on on your network all of the time just to make sure that you, in fact, don't generate any loops. So understand there's some concepts with spanning tree that I want you to understand. Okay, 
I want you to understand this idea of bridge priority. Bridge priority, the bridge with the lowest priority becomes the root bridge. So the bridge priority determines who's the root. Okay. The type of information that's distributed by the bridges is called a or by the switches is called the bridge packet data unit. Okay. And so you can look down here. This is a little capture of a BPDU. So this is a bridge protocol data unit. So it's a spanning tree protocol and you'll see there's information here about this is the ID of the root and this is the age and the hello interval but this is constantly happening on your network. I'll show you here. So let me bring up a protocol capture and so I'm going to go ahead and just start capturing some traffic on my network. So I'll go ahead and click start here and so now we're just gathering some data. All right, and I'll let this run for, uh, you know, five, ten seconds, something like that, maybe a little more than that. But so, and you, so I'll stop it. So you'll see there that I didn't let that run all that long. Okay, but let's go ahead and sort this by protocol. And let me go up here and let's see if we were able to capture any of the spanning tree information. Oh, man, a bunch of that. There it is. Okay, so right there, we see just in that short amount of time, my switch was sending out these BPDUs, the spanning tree information. Okay, because just because there's not a loop right now doesn't mean that there won't be a loop in five seconds. Okay, so this spanning tree is a continual process on the network. All right, so you're constantly seeing these S, these BPDU bridge protocol data units being sent out on the network. All right. So, bridge priority. Okay? Bridge with the lowest priority becomes the root bridge. And the root bridge is really the everything in the loop is relative to the root bridge. That is the start. You know, that you know, normally a loop just has no beginning and end. So we have to define that point and that's what the root bridge is. All right. So told you it wasn't going to be too long, but those are important concepts. I need you to really understand, you know, what spanning tree is, why we have spanning tree, and what happens when you have a bridge loop. All right. We'll see you guys in a little bit. Study hard.